Hello, I'm Zach and this is Stop Provoking Tech. In this episode, I'll be going over the FlashForge Creator Pro and why it's the printer for you. There are uh, both positive and negative aspects to this printer and I'll be going into those uh, fairly deep but while also kind of uh, keeping it on a higher level uh, review just to give you quick information on why this printer might be for you or possibly things to keep in mind when you're just buying a printer in general. So stay tuned. Alright, so the first thing I want to bring up about this printer is it is tough. It has a nice thick uh, metal frame that really makes it very, very sturdy, which I think is a big thing that plays in the part of making it a very reliable printer in addition to that. It has nice side panels, as well as having an acrylic uh, top that's kind of angled up with a little hole in the top for the uh, wire for your filament, as well as the wire uh, that powers the unit. Um, and it has an acrylic door with magnetic, uh, kind of not really latches, but things that hold it closed. Uh, if you're printing with ABS, I put it all together and I promptly took it off because I prefer printing in PLA uh, for a couple reasons, which I'll get to in a second. Um, so beyond just like the build quality of being a very sturdy body and being reliable, there is one little thing with the actual unit in general. Uh, the filament spool holders that come with it are pretty large and they're made for the filament that uh, comes with it as well as some other filament that is out available on the market. I really like Hatchbox uh, from Amazon. Their filament is great and uh, to use it though I had to print a custom spool holders or well a set of spool holders. I found a universal spool holder uh, for this FlashForge on the internet. Uh, I'll try to find that again. It's been a little while but I'll try to find it again and link it. I did have to modify it slightly and I didn't save uh, my modifications, otherwise I would have uh, shared that, but uh, the hatch box has a very, very narrow um, inner diameter that even the so-called universal uh, spool holder was still a little too big to fit within. Um, beyond that, uh, the next, uh, next topic I'd like to bring up is the print quality. I've been very pleased with the print quality. I've previously used a RepRap uh, from Maker Farm, uh, Prussia i3V, and the print quality um, doesn't even hold a candle uh, to what the Flash Forge Trader Pro has been doing for me. Um, I've been very happy with it, uh, and honestly, this is kind of what I expect from a top of the line uh, FDM printer. Now, there's other technologies out there if you're really wanting um, detail, if that is your main focus, there's SLA printers, as well as uh, even higher end, you know, more industrial printers uh, that you can buy parts off from the internet if you're looking for a very, very high quality finish that doesn't need any really work at all. But for what it is for a, a filament based thing with only three axes without the ability to do like a five axis printer or anything like that, I'm very impressed with the quality and really couldn't, couldn't ask for more out of it. So another little positive point is nearly out of the box usability. You do have to put the extruders attached to the uh, plate. You do have to attach those to the plate as well as putting the little acrylic pieces that form the top and putting the hinges on the door and attaching the door to the frame. So there's a little bit of assembly but the entire body, all the electronics and even the wiring is pre-done. This actually just comes in a separate kind of side box but it's already wired up so you just have to attach it to the build platform. Uh, that's probably just for shipping purposes so that it is nice and sturdy um, and stable during shipping as, uh, and then when it gets to your location you uh, can unbox it and put that last little bit together. It probably took an hour total to put it all together and kind of level the platform. The platform itself is a three uh, point uh, leveling system that has three little uh, wing nuts that you tighten or loosen to level the platform. Now, this is where the reliability comes into play here. I've leveled it once originally, and I've leveled it once since. So, all in total, I've only leveled this platform twice. It's been very, very reliable, and uh, probably due to the very sturdy con uh, con uh, construction, 
it doesn't have a lot of, I guess, alteration of where it, it changes over time. So now on to a, a, a negative aspect about this printer, the software. I was really not a fan of the software at all. I had liked Slicer 3 uh, in the past, um, but it doesn't quite work with the .x3g right off the bat. Um, so I was looking for alternatives and I came up with Simplify 3D. It is kind of expensive, I think it's $140 right off the top of my head. Uh, I will put that in the description, the link to it in the description, but it is an excellent software. If you're really into 3D printing and going to be printing a lot of things, I highly recommend just investing in Simplify 3D because it's going to be well worth the investment for everything that you're going to be printing and all the cool little features that it has that kind of add together to just make it printing a breeze. Once you have stuff designed or downloaded off the internet, it's just slide, slap it in there uh, and go, run in with it. Um, it has pre-built profiles for a lot of different printers and the Flashforge Creator Pro is one of those printers that had a pre-made print profile for that honestly I've not touched any of the settings to uh, calibrate it at all uh, so it's been very uh, spot on for having the right settings, the right temperature uh, even with sh switching to a completely different uh, filament from Hatchbox as opposed to the, the standard filament that comes with it now one more negative aspect is the print surface. It comes uh, with two spares and one of them equipped. That's kind of this rough, um, rough tape, uh, kind of like blue planer's tape, but it has a rough surface uh, that I guess is meant to allow stuff to adhere to it better. Now when I was printing with the, the ABS that comes with the printer, it did pretty good, but when I switched to PLA I was having issues. Now with the rep wrap that I've used in the past, I switched to glass and hairspray and never looked back. Um, honestly, if you're doing PLA, I would just uh, go straight to glass and hairspray and you'll be set for life. Uh, I do love pre PLA because it is less odorous uh, and I just had just better experiences with using PLA as compared to ABS. So take that little rough surface off, stick a piece of glass on there and you're set. Uh, the actual adhesive thing I actually left enough adhesive on the platform that I stuck to glass and I've never tried to adhere it any better. Uh, I've used like binder clips before uh, on the rep wrap to hold it down, but I haven't even had to do that because the adhesive has held the um, glass on there tight enough. Now, reliability. I know I've said this a couple times, but I can't say it enough. This machine is reliable. I am very comfortable with starting the print, walking away, going to eat supper, uh, spend some time with the kids, whatever, uh, and then coming back and letting it, uh, checking out how it's doing, uh, seeing if it's done, cleaning the bill plate, and hitting it on another run to do something else, and then coming back later. So, it's, it, like I said, it's, it's reliable, uh, and you can pretty much let it do its thing while you're doing your thing, so it's not one of those printers that need to be babysit. Now on to uh, price. The price is uh, amazing for what this printer offers. I believe it was like a year and a half, two years ago is when we got the rep wrap for work. And uh, compared to what the, the, I think $600 that we paid for the uh, Prussia i3V compared to what this $900 Flashforge Creator Pro, it is hands down a winner. Not only does it have the uh, removable enclosure that like makes ABS a lot easier to print, but it has dual extruders. In the first episode of Printed, I utilized these dual printers to do a dual color print. And honestly, if you're very serious about 3D printing, I would highly recommend a dual extruder uh, printer. There's just so many different things you can do, not only with dual colors, but you can also utilize different, two different materials. Uh, there, is, there are materials out there that are made just for structures that dissolve easier. Uh, uh, there's materials out there that are conductive. So you can embed a conductive filament within your standard print uh, for different projects. And there's also materials out there that are magnetic. So you can embed a magnetic material within your print. So just having that different option uh, is just awesome. And that dual shooter really makes uh, a 3D printer from more of a toy, in my opinion, or you know something for simple projects to really something that you can actually make everyday usable objects just because of 
the added flexibility, the added power that a dual extruder head uh, brings. Now, I had two main negative points that I've said so far. That is the build platform, which you see I fixed with the glass and the software. Now, the only uh, negative aspect that I haven't been able to solve, and you really can't honestly solve it uh, without a new printer, is the build volume. This is the only negative aspect that I can really still say that exists and the only thing that really disappoints me about this printer in, in, in the long run. Uh, it's it's a rectangular platform and it's fairly narrow. It's, it's not quite uh, twice as long. I can't remember what the actual specs are. I'll post that in the description just so you have it or probably just overlay it on the video. Uh, but if it was probably like square or maybe two of them side by side, I would be very happy. Uh, but that narrow build platform actually kind of reduces a lot of the stuff you can do. So if you're wanting big prints, uh, whether you're doing like kind of a cosplay thing, uh, costumes or something, or you're just wanting to print bigger projects, this printer might not be for you. Uh, or you can experiment with joining Bonzo prints together. Uh, that's probably the route I'll go just because I'm so happy with the printer in general. But if they offer an extra large model that was just as reliable, just as durable, I would jump on it in a heartbeat. So that's kind of the, the main talking points. Uh, as you can see, the reliability the, uh, and the quality are the two main selling points that, in my opinion. The biggest negative point that will really affect you is the build volume if that is something uh, that you're really looking for it's a big build, build volume. A couple uh, cool things I wanted to draw your attention to. Uh, the first of which is just uh, LEDs. So upon startup uh, it'll do a little boot up phase and you don't see LEDs come. They actually turn a different color when warming so it just gives you that little visual uh, thing. I kind of have mine set up. I, I can't really see it from where I'm uh, working on stuff and designing stuff. But if you did, you can kind of just see it out of the corner of the eye and see that when it's preheated, uh, you can go ahead and start your print. Uh, I normally don't preheat, to be honest. I just hit the print and just let it preheat itself and go straight to the print. I don't do a prior to um, printing pre preheat unless I'm in a huge hurry and I have like the SD card up my computer um, uploading stuff and I wanted to just give it a jump start to get printing as quick as possible. So uh, that's one of the cool little features. Um, another thing is the heated build platform. Honestly, in this day and age with how cheap uh, printers are, if it doesn't have a heated build platform, I'd highly recommend getting one. Even for PLA use, I still find it useful, um, with, especially with my glass and hairspray. It makes that hairspray a little bit tacky and improves uh, how adhesive uh, the filament is to the material in my experience. Uh, you do run it a lot cooler than you would with an ABS, but still having that heated build platform is useful especially if you're you know it's in winter and you don't have your uh, your run is in a shop or something and you don't have a lot of heat going to it uh it'll just keep that cool and uh just or warm enough that you know is is going to help just the adhesiveness of it um so it's a very small negative thing that doesn't affect me personally but might affect you is that you have to use a usb cable or a micro sd card where i have mine placed i have to use a micro sd card it's not a big deal to me but if you're looking for ultimate ease of use then like having a wireless transfer function that some printers do would be easier and might be a better solution so that's just something to keep in mind uh so that's pretty much the kind of the little bitty end result uh summary things to just I just wanted to attack on that weren't major points but just a couple little things I wanted to showcase so thanks for watching I hope this video was useful uh, and that if you're thinking about a fast force creator pro or just in the market for 3d printers in general that this information was helpful to you uh, I tried to do an unbiased as possible um, for a FDM printer this is definitely a very good printer and I would highly recommend it so I hope this information and kind of the pros and cons that I've kind of outlined will help give you a better insight of whether this printer is for you. And once again, I'd like to uh, just touch on a couple quick things is that if the build volume is a very important thing to you, uh, then this might not be the printer for you due to the narrow rectangular build pl platform, but the quality and the reliability are very good with this printer. So if that's kind of your uh, focus, then it's definitely a good printer for that. If you're just getting into printing, I would even recommend it then. Uh, though it does have a couple small hurdles 
nameless software, but I illustrated how to get over those hurdles in this review. So, once again, if you have any questions, don't hesitate to ask. I'll answer those to the best of my ability. And uh, make sure you like the video if you liked it. Make sure you share it with anyone that might be interested in a FlashForge Creator Pro or 3D printing in general. As well as subscribe to my channel for more great videos. I will have some links in the description to uh, the MZ Community uh, discussion thread uh, to discuss this video if you're interested in learning more. Uh, that's a great place. Um, I've set up an MZ Community just kind of to discuss the videos and different things that I'm working on. Uh, it just seems like a very cool social platform uh, that is starting to grow pretty good right now. Um, in addition, I'll have some other links uh, to my video I just did on the live sign, so make sure you check that out too. Uh, and thanks for watching once again.